Here's an example in which we've got sine plus cotangent times cosine, and they want us to simplify and write this expression in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to write this in terms of sine and cosine. So how is this going to work? Well, let's begin. So right here we have sine of x plus, and then we have, uh, notice what comes next, cotangent. Now, let's go look at our formula sheet. Cotangent up here, it's right there. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So cotangent is cosine of x over sine of x times, and then there's the other cosine. Is that good? So we wrote everything in terms of sine and cosine. <clears throat> and now, what, what in the world are we going to do here? This is where a lot of people get stuck. So right here and they're going, I have no idea. Well, there's a couple of things you got to know about fractions. First off, let me um, write right here. When you've got a whole thing, <laughs> for use of a better, a whole item. How about that? Thing just sounds so um, unimportant. Here we go. When you have a whole item interacting with a fraction, put it over 1. So I'm going to put this guy over 1 and this guy over 1. Does that make sense? They're both whole items, right? They weren't fractions. This was not a fraction and this was not a fraction, yet they're interacting with a fraction. So put them over 1 to make them look like fractions. We good with that principle? All right, next. Um, the next important thing we need to do is, uh, well, here, let me, uh, let me take our next step. So what will that be then? This will be sine x over 1 plus what's going to happen here? Cosine is going to multiply cosine, huh? So it'll be cosine squared of x and then sine. They just go straight, right? When you multiply fractions, and we are multiplying because there was it came from this guy which had no symbol in the middle, so that means times, right? When we have no symbol in, in between, two things, it's always multiply. Cosine squared on the bottom, one times sine is just sine. We good to there so far. So now, here's the other fact you've got to be really clear on. When fractions are added or subtracted, you must get a common denominator by <clears throat> multiplying top and bottom by the other denominator, by the other, whoops, let me uh, try a better job here, there we go, by the other denominator, you must multiply top and bottom by the other denominator, so, Let's go back to this thing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to this fraction first. I gotta make the two denominators the same. So I'm gonna take this fraction. I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by sine x. Why? Because that is the other denominator. I brought it here and here, right? It's the other fraction's denominator. And then, um, what am I gonna multiply top and bottom of this one by? Well, just one, because that's the other fractions denominator, and so that, I, you don't even need to do that, it does nothing. The other, this other fraction basically has no denominator, right? The one is like nothing. All right, so where does that leave us? So really we're just multiplying the top and the bottom of the left fraction here. Do you see that? Is that making sense? Why? Because you're supposed to multiply by the other denominator, so I took this sign and I brought it over top and bottom. Why didn't I do something on this guy? Well, the other denominator was just a 1. It was just a 1. It would have just been 1 over 1, and that doesn't do anything. So if you want, want me to write it, I will. Times 1 over 1, but it doesn't do anything. All right, does that make sense? This, this guy, yeah, let's, let's, I think I'm beating that horse to death. You've got it. So I'm going to bring it, um, kind of running out of room here. Bring it down here. What do we 
got sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. See what I'm doing? I got sine times sine. That made sine squared. Cosine squared times 1. That made cosine squared. Right? Good. Over. And then what's on the bottom? Sine x times 1 and sine x times 1. That's just sine x, isn't it? Good to there. All right, here's the $1,000 question. Do you or do you not recognize this thing here? He's got to jump off the page or the screen for you. He's going to come up a lot in this section. The, you want to know him like the back of your hand. Remember what he is? Let's go look him up if you're not sure. There he is. He's even in a box. He's one. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. It's going to come up all the time. Okay, so this is therefore 1 over sine x. Do you see that? This thing has simplified a lot, hasn't it? And, and so our answer, see, see how they're saying the answer? Back here, here's the beginning question. They're saying the answer is going to be 1 over some kind of function. Tell us what that function is on the bottom. So we just say sine of x. Does that make sense? The, our, the answer, the thing simplified to be 1 over sine x, but they, they only wanted us to give them the denominator. They knew there was going to be a 1 on the top. They just wanted us to give them the denominator. So we just go back and say, oh, okay, you guys know it's going to, you know, right here they're saying, we know it's going to equal 1 over a function. Please just tell us that function that's on the bottom. And we go, oh, you just want the function on the bottom? Okay, that's just sine of x. Sine of x, that's the answer in the box. There we go.